Ashley. I'm Laura. Hey girls, I have an history exam about Ferdinand Seventh Regime. Me too. Can anyone explain me a little, please? Yesterday, looking on YouTube, I saw a video of first ISO students about Ferdinand Seventh Regime. Come with me and I can show you. Okay, come on. Yes, great. So, go on. Come on. Ferdinand Seventh Regime, 1840-1833. When the Peninsular War had finished, Ferdinand Seventh returned to Spain. But he didn't go to Madrid directly, but to Valencia. In this city, 65 deputies, absolute deputies, presented him the Manifesto of President, demanding the recovery of absolute power and the a removal of any remain of uh, liberalism in Spain. He traveled to Madrid and once there he annulated the 1812 uh, constitution and all the laws written by the Cortes of Cadiz and, st and started ru ruling as an absolute monarch. His rule can be divided in th into three stages. Absolutist Sesenio, from 1840 uh, to 1820. It was characterized by the return to the Asian regime, the Inquisition, the return to the states and their the privilege and the disappearance of the individual freedoms and rights of citizens. There were a lot of problems. The country was destroyed after, after six years of war. Uh, there was an economic crisis and the American colonies were fighting for their independence. The Francophiles and liberals were persecuted. In these years there were numerous attempts of restoring the constitution led by military men. At the beginning of 1820 um, Colonel Rafael del Riego proclaimed the Constitution of 1812 in the Casas of San Juan, Seville. Ferdinand VII, frightened, accepted the Constitution of Cadiz in March 1812. 20, after several weeks of indecision, and a liberal government began. The second stage is Liberal Triennium, 1820 from 1823. The Liberals restored the Constitution, abolished the Inquisition and Privilege. But the difference between the Liberals appeared soon and led to the division of two groups, Doceañistas and Ventiañistas. Doceañistas, who thought that restoring the Constitution was enough, Ventiañistas, who wanted to make more reforms and reduce the power of the monarch. This different within the government we have little support. In 1822, Ferdinand VII asked the Holy Alliance for help, and in 1823, the average power of the French army called the 100,000 soldiers on St. Louis. This army crossed the Pyrenees and the liberal government Retired to Cadiz with Ferdinand VII. Mm, but the city of fair little resistance and absolutism came back to Spain. Ominous decay, 1823 from 1833. The king abolished the constitution again. A he to get it a hard persecution against liberals. The repression include the closure of universities and schools. But in 1924, all the Spanish colonies except Santo Domingo, Cuba, Puerto Rico, and the Philippines become independent. The leaders of the revolt in America were 
Simón Bolívar in the north and José de San Martín in the south. Since 1826, there was a certain moderation in the representatives' policy. The more radical absolutists decided to support Don Carlos Maria Isidro, the king's brother, hoping that he would be Ferdinand's heir. But Isabella's birth in 1830 changed the situation. Ferdinand VII changed the succession law, the Salic law, which included women from the throne, to allow his daughter to be the queen. Carlos supports rejected Isabella. In mil yes, <laughs> yes, in mil 1833, when King Ferdinand VII died, the first Carlist War started. As Isabella was only three years old, her mother Maria Cristina became regent. Hi, I'm Maria Cristina. The first Carlist War was born a succession and an ideological conflict, but its end meant the birth of liberal state in Spain. Oh, great video, Monicaco! I all I understand all very good. Yes, these students students are very good explaining. I'm sure they have a ten. Yes. 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 Bye. Bye. We are preparing Maria Cristina for the action. Yes. Here you have your bolso. Me voy a no. No. Hi, I'm Maria Cristina, the next queen of the Spain. Borra, borra. Okay. 1833, 1833. Me equivocado.